Thanks for joining us again on Off the Press, the program where we take a look at today's papers and make sense of it. And uh, today we're joined by analyst uh, Ezekiel Ia Etok, who of course will join us just as we dive into the program today. And we're starting first with the Nigerian Tribune. And the headline here says, man, wife, three children and 20 others killed in Kogi petrol tanker crash. This is a national scandal. Many accidents are preventable, and that's according to President Muhammadu Buhari. Bello meets Fashala, six urgent repairs of federal roads in Kogi. We also see the story here, Tony Ilumelu, uh, named in Time 100 list of 200 uh, of 2020 world's most influential people. And also on the top of the Nigerian Tribune is the story on Edo politics, an Edo election, it says, Oshamale accepts fate, says, you win some, you lose some. Izeyamu meets with Kogi governor, APC caretaker chairman, irresponsible uh, leadership caused our loss, and that's APC leadership. Also, Alawa Kala is advisory, chairman advisory council, not all your APC leader. Mr. E.I. Tok, let's uh, begin with this story first on the Kego, uh, Kogi petrol tanker crash. We've seen in recent time that there's been a lot of uh, crashes like this. You know, we see that uh, uh, petrol tankers uh, go up in flames and lost, lots of lives are lost. I mean, what will be your commentary on this, seeing that it's something that keeps happening over and over again? Yeah, thanks again. It's always a pleasure to be on um, Plus TV Africa. Uh, first, my, my, my heart goes out to all the families that have um, lost loved ones. And um, if you follow the story, some families are literally wiped out completely. And aside from that, they are a representative or a representation or a microcosm of what goes on in this country on a daily basis. The number of lives that are lost is just so humongous and absolutely unnecessary. And the question is, you know, we can report the story, but we can interrogate the story also. The question is, why does this happen? We realize that a tanker driver leaves Lagos and is heading for Maiduguri. Now, this guy drinks all night. There is no proper system that checks these drivers on the road. Who tests, who gives them the protocols? who lets them know that there's a certain number of hours they need to sleep and rest and be able to have their, fun their body systems functioning properly so that when they get on the road, they are alert. That is on one side. But you see that these guys just go to motor parks. There was a time that they had stopped, you know, this issue of um, selling thin liquor in motor parks and loading um, tanker loading bays. But... To what extent is the road safety, uh, you know, enforcing these protocols? And that is on one hand. On the other hand, what is the state of these vehicles? What is the roadworthiness of these vehicles? That's another major problem we have in our hands. Sometimes it is a drunken driver. Some other times it is an alert driver, but the brakes have failed. So there's all sorts of things. When are we going to really know that lives matter? and pay attention as institutions, as government, to these safety protocols that must, of necessity, be adhered to. When is the National Orientation Agency going to start to talk to us on these imperatives that we really need to inculcate as, 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 as a nation? That's still on one hand. On the other hand, we ask ourselves, should certain materials be sent through the roads or by rail? What does it really take for us to sit down and have certain policies and walk through those policies just in the larger interest of the Nigerian citizens? When will the lives of Nigerians start to matter? What is government? What is governance? What is the essence of government and governance? When will we come to have governance that is not politics? 
everything pointed. But on the deliverables, when we will realize that government is the most important institution in the land, more important than WHO, than the WTO, more important than any other institution, because a wrong policy of government will destroy a whole generation. And, and these are the things that bother me. So when I look at things, I ask ourselves, why are our roads so bad? What premium do we pay on the lives of people as they ply the roads? And look at this has happened. It's been happening. And maybe 10 people, I know, because life is so cheap in Nigeria that when it happens to three people, it's like, oh, only three. This is making noise a little bit because it's happened to almost 30 people. But when you aggregate the three, three, four, four, five, five people, you see the number of Nigerians that die on a daily basis. It makes COVID a child's play. That about um, the, the, the headline. There's so much I could say about yes, it. Yes, let, let's and, go um, now to the uh, the issue in me. Edo politics. There's another now. story. Mr. Edo, story if you can hear me. That, um, if you can hear me, Mr. Etok, uh, uh, let's now go to the uh, issue of the Edo politics where, you know, Oshomali yeah. is speaking up saying he has accepted the faith, you know, saying you win some and you lose some. What do you have to say about this, seeing the fact that uh, usually when uh, uh, the party, you, you obviously lose out in the election and then there's the election uh, appeal, the tribunal, but it seems that we're not going to have this in the Edo election and that the uh, APC now has uh, accepted uh, the state of affairs. What do you have to say about that? Would you, would you then make a commentary saying that our democracy is improving then? Um, two things. The very first thing is that I, I want to, um, um, it, it's never too late to make amends. I believe that a no election that Ize Iyamu did not um, lose and, um, and, um, and um, my brother Obaseki did not win. And now that's going to sound controversial. The election was really not about the two of them. The election, in my opinion, was a referendum on one man, and that man is Mr. Oshomole. And somebody was a lucky beneficiary. Another one was an unlucky victim. I think it was more of a referendum on the person of Mr. Oshomole. And the worst mistake he could ever have made was to have passed any contrary uh, uh, remark to the result that was um, pronounced. I, I want to say that it's never too late to make amends. I want to say that it's wise of him to, 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 to uh, accept the will of the people. And I, I also want to, um, to say to my brother, Ize Yamu, don't see yourself as a loser. See yourself as an unfortunate victim and take it that way. Uh, when, when we put it that way, it suits the nerves. Uh, Mr. Opasek is already a winner, so you don't really need to um, add to him. It is Mr. Ize Yamu that I would like to say he was not a loser. He was an un unfortunate victim of a referendum which he had no part to play in. And I think this should sound as a, um, a warning to a lot of people who see themselves as godfathers. The time has come when Nigerians need to be allowed to live their lives. No one man, no matter who you think you are, should sit and have this overbearing influence on the lives of the generality of the people. We are running a democracy. And democracy simply means government of the people, by the people, for the people. The underwriting principle, the, 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 the dominant word there in democracy is the people. And when you constantly disenfranchise the people, which have been our processes over the years, then you have come, you know, brought about a different type of democracy. With Nigerians, we are waking up to say, no, we won't take it anymore. And I want to use this opportunity to, to, to congratulate the people of Edo State. As a matter of fact, let me congratulate Mr. President. You know, I did a video that went viral, was shared by over 1,300 people, watched by almost 80,000 people. And that was an appeal to Mr. President to let this election go the, the way that the people want. And Mr. President has done it, whether it has to do with what I appeal or anybody, it doesn't matter. The important thing is who won, who lost. No, Nigeria is a winner. But I don't think that in the past five years of Mr. President, he has gotten the level of commendation on any subject that he has gotten on a do election 
for allowing it to go free, fair, credible. So please, Mr. President, accept this as my very heartfelt gratitude to you. And I say, God, to whom much is given, much is expected. What you have done is good. What you can do can be better in Ondo State. And then we will ride that momentum into 2023. And you will exit in a blaze of glory and finish strong. That's my thanks to Mr. President and okay. thanks to the people of Ondo State. And of course, the generality of Nigerians that just didn't let it lie low. All right, so let's now look at another story here on the Nigerian Tribune, uh, just below the story on the Kogi petrol tanker uh, crash. It says, electricity petrol price hike. TUC to maintain position as FG meets labor today to avert strike. Now, just uh, before of the press, we had a representative of the Nigerian Labor Congress uh, speaking uh, to us about how resolute they are to go on with this strike. So what, what do you think, really? Uh, do you think that uh, when the governors meet today, Thursday, by 6 p.m., do you think uh, there's any likelihood that the resolutions they would meet there today after several weeks of, you know, giving ultimatums and threatening to go on strike, that they would eventually reach a consensus with the labor unions and that this strike can somehow be averted. Let me set certain records very straight from the onset. Number one is that Nigerians are very unhappy. Number two is that government is taking decisions that must be taken at the wrong time, which is what are the problem always have with this government. They lack strategists and strategic advisors. There's, the Bible says all things are expedient, but not all things, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. It also says, let all things be done decently and in order. There's time for everything. You had a time that you could spank the child and everybody will hear you. There's a time you've spanked that same child and they're like, what's going on here? The, the government took a very good decision at a very wrong time. And that's because when they should have taken this decision, they were too busy doing politics. Number two is that um, there's going to be hardship. There's going to be, as much as Labour says, wait, as long as you don't reverse these things that Nigerians want, we're going to go on strike. And I ask a question. If this is allowed to linger and maybe for the next one month, um, the, thing, the issues are not resolved and they strike, two things happen. Number one is that Generator of Nigerians will not end their pay because they are going to uh, have issues where they are not working. And if they are not working, how are you going to get paid? Now, that is a very, very important point. So they are going to be adding salt to injury. Number two, when this is over, will labor ask to be paid for the period that Nigerians were not paid? If we're going to suffer for the, on account of this strike, let's all suffer together. Let labor say, as long as this is going to happen, we are going to sit it out because my staff, I don't know how I'm going to pay them. I, I, I'm, I, I employ people. I don't know where I'm going to get the money to pay them when there is no work, when the banks do not give me money to be able to get my work to win, when everything is grounded. Now, this brings me to the main question. Labor, you own everything about government. You know every single thing. What is the solution you are bringing to the table? That's number one. Number two, don't you think you should have networked this solution with Nigerians by way of any, any way you can, you can bring this matter to discuss with Nigerians that because it's not just a, an exclusive labor case that is going to just affect labor and then we go about our lives. This is going to be a national strike where everybody's involved. Did you tell us what the points that you are putting on the table are. Now, you are, have you told us the cost of governance, which you control, government control. When I say government, I'm talking of the civil servants. They control all the indices. They know everything. When did you come to network with us and say, if government is able to let go A, B, C, they will be able to do a turnaround maintenance. They will be able to get things working, the refineries. They will be able to save money from imports. Or... This is the landed cost of, of PMS. And these are the cost plus, plus, plus. That's where we, where we are. Government can, do you, do you, have you articulated a position and made that position aware to the generality of Nigerians so that we are all on the same page? And when we all decide, okay, government, 
These are very reasonable demands that Labour is making on our behalf, to which we have made our input. Execute it. If you don't execute it, we stay, we hold our stomach and wait. And we are all waiting. We are all going to lose, including Labour. If we wait for three months, nobody's going to get paid. I don't want a situation where Labour calls us out and we get there. Things are done the way that um, maybe shouldn't be done. And at the end of the day, my staff come back I don't have money to pay them. And then Labour goes back and says, we're going to go on strike unless you okay, pay Mr. off Eshel, all the money. Running out that of time at the moment, if you, you can hear year. me. Let's quickly move on now to uh, this newspaper here. And this is a Nigerian, The Nation. And the story here is, you know, just uh, what you've been talking about, petrol and electricity hike, labor listing conditions to halt that strike. Also, government, NLC and Trade Union Congress to meet today. Governor Stepali mobilization continues. And we also see here, uh, when you look uh, just uh, above, we see... On the Edo 2020 election, INEC replaces burnt card readers, commissioners, others joined ZLP, a Jai APC clash over attack on campaign office, deputy governor's aide uh, joins APC. We also see the story here saying that 70, 37 billion Naira refund missing under Yari, says Zamfara uh, state government. And also, this very interesting one on the October 1st celebration, just below here on the Nation newspaper, it says, police dismiss IPUB October 1st sit-at-home call just below here on the Nation newspaper. Let's quickly touch on this story, uh, Mr. Nyek Etok. Uh, we see that Nigeria is uh, uh, preparing basically to celebrate her 60th independence uh, anniversary, and the president has said this will go on for as long as a year till next year, September. But uh, members of IPOB are uh, uh, you know, telling members to basically boycott all independent celebrations and sit at home. But the police is saying they shouldn't listen to that and that every Nigerian should come out to celebrate and go about their lawful business. So, so what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, number one, I think IPOP, talking about sit at home, looked beyond the independent celebration there. They are saying what is going on with the Odudua Republic. We are in sympathy with them. And that brings a larger conversation of setting every sex, virtually every section of the country, trying to do something that will kind of safeguard their own section of that divide. And it brings to fore what we've always said about the divisions of this country that this country has not been this divided in a very long time. So the issue of IPOP is not, uh, should not be, be isolated. And for the, one of the very few times, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, where uh, Ohaneze seems to have an, under, an agreement with IPOP, and that's because it has to do with a sister body that is advocating what they are also looking at, which is regional strengthening and the regional emancipation of sort, because generality of Nigerians feel that we've become um, um, city, not, not citizens, we've become um, strangers in our own lands. And um, it brings to fore the question of uh, are we a nation or are we a union? Now, when you talk in terms of the, the European Union, the union is different entities coming together to execute a certain agenda, whereas a nation is a body tied by a common philosophy, a common drive, a common goal. Uh, sometimes it could be culture, or sometimes it could be religion, sometimes it could be you know, language, just something that makes us feel we are Nigerians. Before you can say, I am a, 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 an, an Anang man, you, you, you tell yourself, I'm a Nigerian of Anang extraction. And I think that Mr. President needs to really, advisors of Mr. President really need to, really, really, really need to let him know that there is a major problem. There's a fundamental problem. Re the regionalization of this country it is, is taking a dimension. Now, when you look at what happened in a those state, let me go back again. You see a situation where PDP says, let's control the South-South. And they've been able to do that. Let's take the South-South. Then the Igbos are saying, let's get together. The Yorubas are saying, 
let's get together. And of most recent, the middle belt are saying, let's get together. So you now have middle belt in Nigeria, Yorubas in Nigeria, Igbos in Nigeria, South South in Nigeria. Whereas you should have Nigeria where you have Igbos, Nigeria where you have Northeasterners, Nigeria where you have Fulanis, Nigeria where you have um, South South. You know, but they, they, that, that's what Rwanda has achieved. That's what our next door neighbor Ghana have achieved. When will we start the journey of nationhood? So for me, I think um, looking at the story of IPOP, just from the narrow prism of um, stay at home, don't move, I think there's a larger conversation on that and we need to face that larger conversation. Indeed, indeed, Mr. Iyengeto. Let's now quickly wrap up with today's day newspaper. And the big story here says, Buhari seeks more concerted global efforts to fight terrorism. It says, FG committed to reconstruction of Northeast, calls for uninhibited supply of COVID-19 vaccines to all nations. We'll all see um, some other stories here, including that story in Edo for APC leadership, mounting pressure on Ize Yamu to accept defeat, and the tanker uh, fire also in Lokoja. But here on this big story on this day, we see that uh, a fake news basically uh, went viral on the internet saying that uh, or claiming that Nigeria ranks third on the Global Terrorism Index. And uh, this story has or this claim has been debunked and we see Buhari, uh, the president, seeking more concerted global efforts to fight terrorism. How far do you think Nigeria is away from the fight against terrorism, Boko, Ram, banditry and all of that so the country can take her place in the pride of nations, especially as she celebrates her 60th uh, independence very soon? Um, the very first thing is that I wish we had a little more time. Unfortunately, we don't have because I think the story about the organized private sector, you know, commending uh, CBN for reducing interest rate for someone like me is very important because I'm, I'm a private sector person. So such stories make such a lot of big sense to me. And also the PIB, a new version being sent to the National Assembly or in the process, it's also a sweet story for me. When you come to this issue of um, terrorism and all those things, there are so many things that just don't add up. They just don't add up to me. I I'm a private citizen, but I know that there's no terror group that is bigger than this nation if we want to face it. And I ask a simple question. Why must we retain? Is it a point that Mr. President is trying to make? Why must we retain the service chiefs for how long? You do the same thing and you do get the same result. Do the same thing the same way. What you get is the same result. I mean, what really is it? What point are we trying to really prove here again? So I'm sick and tired of these narratives on terrorism and banditry and Nigeria ranked. We all know that there's massive insecurity on the land. And for me, as far as I'm concerned, the time has come when we need to come and think outside the box. I said here on this program last week, and I'll repeat it again. Security is no rocket science. Nobody goes to where he knows that he will be met force by force. Let's let the think outside the box. Maybe the time has come for we to activate, for us to activate powers for the traditional rulers. I, I come from a village. I come from a village and I know how my village works. When some boys tried to enter my village, I know how we solve that problem. I know how the village head came together, got the boys together, and it's like, you, you have to run somewhere. Where is the person going to? And the moment we came together and took that decision, my, my village in Siak Town had peace. So this is no rocket science. These terrors cannot, or terrorists cannot just be roaming free and making us look so helpless. The biggest nation on, 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 on a black nation on earth. I, I think that the time has come when Mr. President to summon a few eggheads, a few hotheads. And if he really means well, if his challenge is, how can I solve this problem? I can personally put down, I'm not a security expert, but I have listened to all analysis on different stations, including Plus TV Africa. I can give Mr. President a list of 20 people that he can lock up in a room for one week. And the document given to him Execute it, and I can tell you that in one year, Nigeria will become such a peace heaven. Let's let's not make it look like there's no solution to this. We're not helpless. We are we're not running helpless out of time. All we need is to take those hard decisions. I'm sorry, we've we'll run out of time for off the press today. Thank you so much for all who's been here to help us make sense of the national dailies. Thank you. My pleasure.
and it's a wrap on off the press and we'll be right back on the breakfast